Well, in the short term, it's Oklahoma's agriculture industry that benefits the most from expanded trade with Cuba. Earlier, I visited with some gentlemen who have all worked on opening that market. Uh, and, and, and from an economic standpoint, Representative Arms, for a country that prides itself on its free enterprise system, we're not being very free right now. We still have a lot of old wounds. I think, you know, the, our government still has a distrust of, of their government. And, and while I understand that, I think it, there's been enough water under the bridge that I, I think it's ridiculous not to try to open that door, as Terry says. And, and you know, my big deal, of course, uh, I think if we get enough Americans down there, there's a beef market there, too because as Americans travel and they pull into those nice resorts, and as you know, we all were there, it's a beautiful country and, and ripe with tourism opportunities. Um, I think there's a tremendous opportunity to sell prime beef to those nice restaurants that the Americans would then go to. And, and I promise you, a lot of people from the other parts of the world, we could, we could sell that to them also. So the, the obvious things, the pork and the things that their, their culture uses now, and wheat, which they love our wheat, by the way. It mills very nicely. It's just a great quality product for them, and their millers like it a lot. But those are the natural fits. I think we build other markets, too. And, and uh, I just think it's a logical, I mean, it is. It's 90 miles away. You can bounce a ship. Bounce a ship's probably not a very good term. We can send a semi from Oklahoma with a load of wheat, put it on a ship at Houston, and it's in Cuba in a matter of just a little yes. bit. And it's not a long haul. It's not like going over the Atlantic or over the Pacific. It's just a close, it's a hop, so to speak. And it just, it just makes more sense uh, to trade with them than it makes sense not to. And Senator Warwick, I appreciate a point that you made the last time we were in Cuba, is while this market may not be open, when it, it does become open, we're ready. Absolutely, that, and that's what I appreciate about uh, uh, the opportunity to go in the past. Uh, our state commissioner of ag has led a delegation down there several times, and and we're ready. Uh, there's, you know, beef, wheat, uh, all sorts of agriculture products. Uh, this country, we ship a lot of whole milk powder to countries far and away, uh, long distances, uh, much further than Cuba. And uh, the, in the past, the de devaluation of the U.S. dollar has, has uh, opened the door for some uh, export opportunities for products from this nation to other countries, but here's one that's right in our back door that because of all the problems that exist, as uh, Terry was mentioning uh, about the exchange of money, uh, one of the officials down there explained to me that if this exchange took place over a weekend and you made that exchange through a European bank, that this added days to the transaction, which, which creates major, major problems. So like I say, I think we're ready. Uh, I'm excited about the opportunity as things change in the future and, and optimistic they will change in a way that uh, will help uh, agriculture, Oklahoma agriculture and agriculture in general from the United States and partnering with Cuba. Gentlemen, thank you all. And we continue our conversation about the future of Cuba on our website. Simply go to OKHorizon.com, where we also have links to previous stories about the island nation.